These are the new Porsche 718 GTS models, the Cayman and the Boxster. Now, I know what you're thinking, they've given us the old ones by accident. But this isn't your standard facelift. In fact, it's more of a heart transplant. Because out goes the unfancied four-cylinder engine, and in comes a new flat six. Well, I say new, it's actually the same unit used in the Cayman GT4 and the Boxster Spider. Pretty tasty then. So, let's see how they get on. First, we're going to have a little spin on the track in the Cayman. Don't forget to leave a like, hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss out on another auto car upload. So first up, it is Cayman GTS and we're on the track. We're on uh, the track at Estoril here in Portugal. So it's, uh, it's a fairly hairy old track. Good test of any car. What do we notice first? Well, obviously it's the sound. We know what we're here to test. Yes, there've been some detail improvements to the cosmetics of the GTS, but essentially it's that engine and you can hear it taking off now. So it's essentially the same engine that you'll find in the Cayman GT4 and the Spider, but with 20 horsepower less. And that's pretty much it. There's the same amount of torque, so it's 310 pounds for the torque. Same six-speed gearbox, same dual mass flywheel, same exhaust system. It is, to all intents and purposes, a GT4 engine. And as a result, Porsche claim 0-62 in 4.5 seconds, which is a tenth slower than a GT4, which isn't much. In terms of engine transmission, you could be driving a GT4. And the difference, I know we've gone on about the four-cylinder engines and how they're not really in keeping with a Porsche's character, but you sort of get used to them. And the moment you climb in this thing and hear that engine, oh, you know they've made the right decision to put this flat six in between the axles of this car. I mean, I reckon maybe in gear stuff, the old car might be a smidgen quicker, but you'd really have to be trying to notice. And the throttle response here is just lovely. Like all proper naturally aspirated units, you get out just as much acceleration as you squeeze with your right foot. Everything is so beautifully proportional. And yes, there's the noise. I mean, frankly, it could be a second slower than the old car and you wouldn't care because when you open the throttle, this thing will rev out to 7.7. Seven. Listen to that. Oh, what a noise. The rest of the car, well, Essentially, it's GT4 as well. Yes, it hasn't got the rose jointed bits and some of the chassis stiffening, but unless you are really, really trying it, there's, there's maybe, maybe a biscuit more understeer through really quick stuff, but like so little difference. You haven't quite got the outright grip because you don't have the wider tires or the Michelin Cup 2s, but even here on track, pushing on a bit, there's more than enough grip and traction. We've also got the 20 millimeter lower sport chassis, all the other toys, Porsche torque vectoring management. So we've got the active limited slip differential. We've got the active engine mounts. We've got everything that the GT4 has got. Apart from, as I say, a few detail improvements. It's not quite as stiff. Brakes are a bit smaller. This car's on the cast iron brakes. There is a carbon ceramic option, but Frankly, we've been pushing on in a few Ducks and Drakes laps behind some committed instructors and they haven't wilted yet. Oh, the noise, the six-speed manual. The throw allegedly is slightly longer than in the GT4 for more ease of use, but again, we're talking degrees of difference. What a lovely thing to be able to heel and toe up and down the box. Listen to that engine coal all the way out to seven odd thousand rpm and here's the good bit it costs about ten thousand pounds less than a gt4 and is a series production model so you can just go into your porsche dealer and buy one it's probably 99.93 percent of what a gt4 offers but in a cheaper package what's not to like OK, so the Cayman was pretty handy around Estoril, but we've come to expect that from mid-engine Porsches. The GTS model, however, 
needs to be equally as adept on the road. So let's get out there in the Boxster and find out what it's like. Right, so for the Boxster GTS, we've headed out on the road and this is where the GTS formula, the magic really works because on the track, as I said, the Cayman was giving you 99.93% of what a GT4 can give. The balance is there, the steering's the same, the suspension's the same, you know, it feels like the same car, just a tiny bit softer, a tiny bit softer. And that's where the tables are turned, out on the road, that extra sheen of smoothness, refinement, is what makes the GTS such a great compromise, such a great road car and a good track car. And again, with the Boxster, not only do you get that same four litre engine, essentially the Spider, the GT4 engine, 20 less horsepower, that's all, four litre flat six, you get the roof off and you get to hear it even more. And, oh, it sounds absolutely wonderful. We've missed this. We've missed this in a Cayman or a Boxster. This six cylinder noise, oh yes. It's what it's all about. The four cylinders were effective, very effective, but they're not a patch on this. Gearing still a tiny bit long, very much a Porsche trait, but other than that, just spot on. Listen to the engine. Throttle response is immediate. It probably doesn't punch quite as hard in the mid ranges as the two and a half litre, but that lovely linear throttle response is just beautiful. Oh, you can just, what a noise. And of course, unlike the Spider, you don't have to faff around with the, uh, the tent over your head, the one that takes 14 hours to erect or put down. Simple push button in this one, roof down, you've opened yourself up to that engine. So good is that engine that it's not difficult to overlook the chassis because you can't really. But out here on the road, that little softer edge that the GTS has, you really appreciate it. Bumps that you'd be clenching your teeth over in a GT4. This smothers. It's firm and it's very controlled. With the extra compliance in the chassis, you can just lean on it that little bit harder. It gives you a little more feeling on the road at saner speeds. Steering is just bang on. Again, with these Porsche electromechanical racks, they filter out all the bits they don't think you need and just give you the information that they think is vital. And it's just perfect. You're not distracted by kick, kickback at all. It's just gently letting you know what's going on. Rate of response is just perfect. It's not twitchy or nervous. You can just roll onto the chassis, feel the forces building up. Balance is sublime. You can just feel each axle working against the cornering loads. Just through these corners, just oh, gives you options. You can feel it wanting to move and steer it on the throttle, just a little stab of the throttle to get the, the car pointing just so. Bags of front end grip, brakes are spot on too, as you'd expect with Porsche. This one's on the cast, cast iron standard option, loads of feel, loads of progression, lots of bite. And yet, as I say, even with the 20 millimeter lowering of the chassis, it's not uncomfortable. You can really ride the bumps. Very rarely do you feel like your spine is about to go through the top of your head, which can happen at a GT4, because let's not forget, those are track focused cars, not this one. This is much more, much more usable day in, day out. I mean, it's, it's a cut price Spider basically. 10,000 pounds, less than a Spider. You get that engine, you essentially get the same handling, the same feelings, and I'm gonna go out on a limb here as well. With the roof off, putting you closer to that four litre engine, 400 horsepower pretty much, 390 something, give or take a few horsepower. With the roof off, you are up close and personal with it. And it just adds, like the 911 Speedster, like the Spider, it just adds that extra layer of involvement for 65,000 pounds and a proper motorsport engine in the back. I'm gonna go as far as to say, it's value for money, good value for money. And I know 65,000 pounds is a lot of money, but <laughs> listen to it. Oh, and again, oh, lovely. This could just be the perfect sports car. There, I've said it. Oh. 
<laughs> Lovely. The Boxster and Cayman GTS really are remarkable pieces of kit. Now, there's nothing really wrong with the old car. In fact, it was arguably the best, most balanced model in the lineup. But that chuntering four cylinder engine really robbed it of some magic. Now, with that motorsport design six cylinder in the back, these cars are touching brilliance. Then, you consider that they cost around £10,000 less than both the Boxster Spider and the Cayman GT4, and well, you could just consider them the sports car bargains of the decade. Now don't forget we're here every week with news, reviews, group tests, you name it. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss another auto car video.